If there is one skill a data architect needs, well, it's drawing on a whiteboard. But after that, it's the ability to turn those drawings into useful diagrams. But it's not just a skill for architects. Engineers and analysts should also be able to communicate through visual layouts of their systems. Let's go through a few different diagrams and who and what they're useful for. We'll start with the least technical option, our business diagram. As you can probably guess, this is for business or end users. For all of these diagrams, I'll just be using a basic setup with a variety of cloud tools. They might not make sense. I'm just trying to highlight the diagram purpose, not to do an actual architecture. Our goal here is to simply display our data process, highlighting key platforms and tools. I'm going to break things down into ownership groups. So in this case, we have data coming in from Salesforce and an internal database owned outside of the analytics team. We use Stitch to ingest, Snowflake to store, and then R to model. This is what the analytics team owns. And then there are Tableau reports and Excel sheets, which the users interact with. We can get across some of the complexity to help with requirements and expectations, but in a way that isn't overwhelming. Building on that, we have the dev diagram. This time our audience is for developers and engineers who will build and maintain the system. The same flow is displayed, but we're going to layer on useful information. We don't need to get into a lot of detail, that's for accompanying documentation, but we're going to highlight things like the name of databases or source applications, who owns or administers each of those systems, a general idea of what data they provide, how frequently ETL occurs, and what team owns each of these products. Basically, an overview of where to find things and who to contact for more information. Now we're getting to the classic infrastructure diagram. This time we'll be using an Azure platform. This is the overview of all the pieces of our data platform. We'll have our various sources from databases to apps to log data, how that data gets triggered for ingestion, our raw data or staging storage, transformation steps like going from raw storage to data lake to data warehouse, what tools we're gonna to be using for each of these steps, and what databases we're using, any additional layering for reporting or data science, and what we're going to use to orchestrate. Basically, a full overview of the tools and programs we're going to use to create our platform and the general flow of data between them. You can add additional data flow information if, for instance, your IoT data bypasses Data Lake and goes straight to Cosmos DB, you can indicate that, or if you have additional transformation steps along the way. The look of this will vary a lot depending on the specific architecture, just don't overdo it and clearly show the infrastructure. And finally, we're gonna have our threat diagram. This is geared more towards networking. We're going to show all the boundaries between the parts of our system, what objects exist within each of them, and then how data transfers between them. We really wanna show how our data is protected in transit as well as at rest. Also, what sort of access security we have for each object. We can call out additional security practices we have in place, such as removing data over time or encryptions or IP restrictions. We can also point out potential threat actors in various points such as unauthorized threats and authorized threats. This is an area I'm still learning a lot about, but I really like this diagram. So those are a few options you can base your diagrams off of. And of course, each system will be unique and might have varying needs for what information to convey. But really, diagramming is just fun. Even if you're new on a team, it's fun to try to visually represent the platform you're working on, and the team will find it helpful. If you enjoy this kind of topic, be sure to like the video and then check out this one where I map out some ETL and ELT data flows.